What's up? Welcome to Back End Stuff. I'm Jacob Blitzo here to help you build tech for the future. Think about scalability, reliability, and cost. <coughs> if you want to learn how to build scalable, production ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. This is episode eight in Elixir Basics. Today we are diving into guards. Guards are a way to expand pattern matching with more complex checks. Uh, guards begin with the when keyword followed by a Boolean expression. And these expressions are special functions which must be pure functions. And what that means is they always have to return the same value for a given input. And they also have to always return a true or false. Let's go ahead and open up our terminal and create a project and get started. I'll make this bigger so we can see it. Let's CD to our desktop and then mix new, and I'm gonna call this project guards, enter, and then CD into that directory. And now we'll just go ahead and pull up that project. So file open folder, guards open. All right, expand the lib directory here, double click on guards. And let's just delete this hello world function. We don't need it. So one of the most common guards is type checks. And our kernel gives us a bunch of functions to do type checks right off the right out of the gate. So we can do things like this def type pass in a value. And now for a guard, we type in the when keyword right here. So when, and then we can use the kernel functions to check for type. And one of those is is integer, pass in a value. If this is true, then we will call this function and we'll just return an atom integer. So if we pass in an integer, we will get return an atom integer, okay? So save that, let's open up our terminal and Let's get our Elixir shell up and running. So IEX space dash capital S space mix. And now if we do guards dot type and we pass in an integer, close parentheses, boom, we get an integer. Now, if we pass in anything else, we're going to get an error. So if I pass in 8.5, we get a match pattern error, just like we did in the pattern matching episode, because it only has one function to attempt and it didn't, it wasn't true. So let's cover that. Let's go back to our guards.ex file and let's do type value and now when, and now let's check for floats. Is float, pass in a value, close parentheses, and then do a, a do, and let's return an atom float. All right, now save that and go back to our terminal. Let's recompile. And now we can pass in 8.5 and it will send a float. So we can also use Boolean operators. So we can use like and, or, and not. So with guards, you wanna cover all the cases. Like if we pass in a string right now, we get an error, just like I showed you with the float. But what if we don't wanna cover everything else? We can just do this. We can do def type value, close parentheses, when, and then you can do a not, when it's not, and then a kernel function is number, right? So anything that's not a number, so numbers include integers and float, and when it's not a number, this will be true. And then we can so say do, we will return the atom, not number. Save it, go back to our terminal, let's recompile this, and now we can go ahead and pass in any value. We can pass in an atom if we want, it's not a number. We can pass in a string, uh, let's say cheese, close parentheses, enter, not a number. And then we can also check that, you know, 233, that's an integer. So guards are pretty cool. We can also do comparisons, okay? So let's go back to our VS code and let's make a new function. Let's check for, if we pass in a number, I wanna know if it's a single digit 
or not. So like 10 is a double digit. That's not a single digit, but eight is a single digit. So let's do def is underscore single underscore digit opening parentheses. Let's pass in a value closing parentheses when, and then we want to check to make sure it's an integer is integer underscore integer pass in our value. And now we want to use and keyword. So the Boolean and, or the Boolean operator and, and then we want to make sure our value is less than 10. And if it is, we want to return true. We can do Boolean operators. We can do comparison values. We can also do arith arithmetic if we wanted to. So we could do the value like times two, is that less than 10? So you can do all that good stuff as long as this guard is returning true or false, okay? So let's save it and go back to the terminal, recompile, and now if we do guards dash or dot is single digit and we pass in an eight, it's true. Now, what happens if we pass in 33? Okay, so we get the match clause error, but we didn't get a true back, which is pretty cool. Now, if we wanted to cover all other options here, we could just do def is single underscore digit value when, um, let's see, we want like when it's not is integer, value, close parentheses, and when the value is greater than nine, we want to return false. And now we have all the other scenarios covered. So if it's not an integer, and if the value is greater than nine, it will return false and we won't get a match clause error. So let's recompile this and we can pass in is single digits 33. Oh, we want to do an or, I put an and. So if either of these are true or, you know, not is an integer and is above nine, we want it to return false. Go back to our thing, our, our shell, let's recompile and let's try that again. Single digit 33, false, there we go. Before when it was an and, they both had to be true and we actually passed in an integer so that was false. So that's why it did not call our second function there. But we caught it. That's the fun of programming, right? If you make a logic mistake, it's pretty easy to catch, especially if you write tests. Okay, so we can also define our own guards with def guard. So now we can put our guard name in and let's say we want to check if an integer is even or odd. So is underscore even. Per Elixir's documentation, the naming standard, or yeah, the, the naming like convention for best practices with guards is always doing is underscore because it is at the end of the day, a Boolean check. So it's like is even, it will be true or false. And that's just naming best practices. And so is even, we're passing in a value and then when we want to make sure it's an integer, so is integer, and we want to use the kernel function rem, R-E-M, which is remainder, and we pass in the value, and we want to know if there's a remainder, if it's divisible by two, okay? So like if six went into it, two goes into six, three times and it's a it would be zero remainders but if it was an odd number we wouldn't get zero it would be like one so if the remainder equals zero we know it's an even number so there we just wrote our own guard and let's let's put a p at the end of this guard which makes this guard private that means it cannot be accessed outside of this file because we're not calling this function directly, we're going to have other functions use this guard. Uh, so now let's write a function called uh, def return even numbers. 
and then we pass in a value and when, and now we use our is even guard. So is even, pass in our value. So if this function returns true, we do this and we're gonna just return the value. So if it's even, we return it. Let's go back to our shell and do recompile. And now if we do guards dot return even numbers, if I pass in a six, it returns it. If I pass in a 54, it returns it. If I pass in 79, we get a match clause error. So it's working as expected. Let's go ahead and cover the other instances. So let's do a def return even numbers, pass in a value, oh, numbers, pass in our value when, and now we wanna use the not Boolean operator again, is even. Pass in a value, oh, get rid of one of those parentheses, value, closing parentheses, and then do, and let's just return an atom, not even. All right. So save that, let's go back to our terminal. Let's recompile. And now if we do guards return even number 79, hit enter, we get our atom back not even. And then if we did 54, we get our number back. So that's pretty sweet. Now, what happens if we just pass in no value? So it's nil, we get another match clause error. I don't know, I don't. I can't remember if we ever went over setting default values. Let's go back into our IDE, so guards.ex file. And you can do, um, after the parameter, you can do double or one space and then double backslash space. And then any value you put after turns into the default value, all right? Uh, but if you notice that we get yelled at if we put it directly on one of these functions and we're getting yelled at because they want us just to create a define, they want us to define this in the fun uh, function header. And so when you have multiple functions that just have different guards or pattern matching, what they want us to do is basically write a header function like def return even numbers and we just pass in our value here and then we can set the default value and we can be like Adam is empty so now we'll never have nil but at least this value will be passed in and then so is even will be false and it will call this function every time so let's save that go back to our terminal recompile and now let's go ahead and send in no value with our return even numbers and then boom we get a not even because nil is not an even number all right it's challenge time so as usual per usual as usual i don't know write documentation for all of these functions write tests for all of these functions and then from the pattern matching episode so just one back i want you to do the same exact challenge we did in that episode that is under max load so i want you to take the equipment load and check it against the flying saucers max load and return true or false but i don't want you to write it the way you did last week which i'm guessing you probably used an if statement or something i want you to rewrite that function using guards and everything you learned today is plenty of information to do it all. I don't even have to give you guys a hint because you should be able to easily do it with all the information you learned here today. As always, if you need help or want to check out the solution, check out that GitHub link in the description. And if you, want, if you have more questions or just want to hang out and chat with me, join my Discord server, Backend Stuff. That link is also in the description. If you want to learn how to build scalable, production-ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. See you next time.